Hi everyone! Today on Cooking Up Love we're making Sunday Night Short Ribs. This recipe is easy. I'm giving it two pies on our simplest pie ranking. With just a little bit of prep it gets into the slow cooker and is ready in five to six hours. Let's get started. This short rib recipe is a family favorite that's great for any night of the week and can be served a couple of different ways with potatoes, over pasta, as a meat sauce. We're starting with boneless short ribs, about three to four pounds. I usually get mine from Costco where they're super fresh and about $20 for six ribs that are decently sized and well marbled. I've heated my largest skillet on medium high heat and after a sprinkle of salt and pepper on both sides, the ribs are getting a nice searing. If you're not able to get all of your ribs into the pan at once, work in batches. You'll find this recipe is pretty flexible. Today, I'll be cooking the short ribs for five to six hours on low in the slow cooker. You can speed this recipe up to about three to four hours of cooking time by putting it on high in your slow cooker. You can also prepare this recipe in the oven. Just set your oven at 325 degrees, bake in a covered Dutch oven for about two and a half hours. I like making it in the slow cooker because it's pretty fuss free and doesn't heat up the kitchen. Next, slice one medium sized onion into rings or half rings. I'm using a Vidalia sweet onion today but you can use what you have. We're going to be sauteing these in the pan drippings. Now that the short ribs are seared, they're ready to transfer to the slow cooker or your crock pot. This is a fantastic hands-off make-ahead dinner for when you've got other things that need to get done. For precise done times, you'll be testing the ribs for tenderness so your short ribs are not under or overcooked. And we'll be going over that in just a bit. There's not a lot of fat left over here, so I'm going to go ahead and add the onions. These will cook down over medium heat. You'll want to toss the onions every few minutes. I've sped up this video a bit, but you can see that this won't take long. We're looking for this nice caramelization effect. Once the onions are almost done, I'm adding one large clove of garlic. If you love garlic, you can add two to three cloves. Garlic burns very easily, so you'll want to add it right as you're finishing cooking the onions. I squeeze mine directly into the pan with a much loved garlic press. Then saute for just a few seconds to release that wonderful garlic flavor. Time to deglaze. In this step you can use a quarter cup of red wine, more if you like. I'm out of wine today so I'll be using a little bit of tomatoes and juice. You can use whatever tomatoes you prefer, crushed, pureed, diced, or whole. We're going to be using a 28 ounce can. You can also use two 16 ounce cans. My husband always says he prefers the pureed tomatoes, but today I'm using the fire roasted whole stewed tomatoes. What kind is your favorite? Now, we're pouring in the onions and tomato mixture. Mm -hmm. 
Now for the seasoning. Here's a list of the seasoning ingredients. If you're cooking along and would like to hit pause. I'm using kosher salt. If you're using table salt, you may want to use less, about one and a half teaspoons. I have someone helping me out with this part today. First, two teaspoons of kosher salt. One teaspoon of dried thyme. We're using the half teaspoon measure so it will fit in the spice jar. One teaspoon crushed red pepper for some heat. If you like things spicy, add a little more. I'd love to know if you're interested in seeing either more side dishes or if you'd like more main dish recipes in upcoming videos. Just click on that box in the upper right corner to cast your boat. Two bay leaves. Okay. And four teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. I love this little liquid measuring cup. It makes measuring liquids so easy. If you cook a lot, it definitely makes things easier. Anyway, if you want to check it out, I'll put it in the description below. You can find them for about five or six dollars or even two for ten dollars. And then you can surprise your friend with one. She'll love it too. And the Worcestershire sauce. and adding the rest of the 28 ounce can of tomatoes. And dry ingredients. And giving it a stir. We forgot to add the two tablespoons of brown sugar to the dry ingredients, so adding them now and giving it a quick stir. Do you think you'll be making today's recipe? Give me a quick yes or no in the poll we've got ready in the upper right hand corner. The lid goes on and the ribs cook away undisturbed. After two hours, here's a look at them. I'll move around some of the ribs that are on the bottom, but if you're not home, it's not necessary. If you make this dish the day before, any fat will harden in the refrigerator and can easily be skimmed off the surface before reheating. For a tenderness check, using tongs, you'll want to move them around and see if they're flexible and almost falling apart. And here's a look after four hours. And after six hours, you can see there's more liquid. If your short ribs have released more fat than this, use a fat separator or spoon off the extra fat
The short ribs are so tender. Today we'll be having them with smashed potatoes. I'll link to the recipe at the end of this video and in the description below. They're so delicious and get a nice crispy crust after a few minutes in the oven. Sunday night short ribs are also great with baked potatoes. Oh, and they're amazing over pasta. In fact, by breaking up the meat into smaller pieces before serving, you've got a meat sauce that is out of this world. Here's our socials, and as promised, the smashed potatoes recipe. You're going to love them. I'll see you in the next video.